Segi Show Live originates from our Universal Radio Studios. Celebrities from TV, music, movies, literature, politics, and show business, at one time or another, they all come to the Ron Segi Show. So why don't you? You can try fighting the law all you want, but the law is always going to win. From politicians and celebrities to sports figures and business leaders, they're fighting the law. Now here to sort out the nation's top legal news stories is America's favorite legal analyst, Royal Oaks. This is the Royal Oaks Show. Thank you, Mike Warren, and welcome to the Royal Oak Show, and welcome to our co-host, Ken Jeffries. How you doing, Ken? Hi there. And how are you? Our millennial correspondent, Connor Oaks, is back. How are you doing today? I'm well. Lovely uh, lovely day out there. Happy to be here. I'm glad you're both here. Uh, this is... Uh, this is huge. This is literally impossible to cover everything we should cover today. It's insane. Do you know why I say it just like that? Literally, literally impossible. Literally impossible. Who knows? Rob Lowe Rob from Lowe. Re- Parks, and, Parks Recreation. and Recreation. That was his catchphrase. Literally. literally. He's on my mind the because, greatest. frankly, I can't tell you how many times people have come up to me on the street. And said, Rob. Know, yeah, mistaking Rob, me yeah, for Rob, Rob Lowe. Lowe right. I've gotten right, to the right. point where I just sign the autographs. I love you, know, you it's on the easier. West Wing. Yeah. Ken, it's, it's happened to you. Don't people mistake you for, like, Paul Rubens? Doesn't that happen uh, uh, on Paul, occasion? Paul Ru- yeah, uh, Paul Rubens is, uh, yeah, what's his name? Uh, Pee-wee well, Herman. Pee-wee Herman, P- yeah. Pee-wee's his alter ego. Uh, and then what I do is I introduce, him, I introduce him to Cherry. <laughs> yeah, why not? You're you know, telling me you're not Paul Rubens? No, I'm not. <laughs> so big, big uh, day on the show, folks. We're going to talk about Michael Cohen's huge day in court. I think he actually was a big winner in Amazing. court today. Stormy was the loser. Criminal referral for Andrew McCabe. Well, he true. could be going down big time. The Cosby Show, uh, 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 week two, we're calling it the Cosby it's Show. It's the Cosby Show. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You is know, it's Cos- another reboot, isn't it? Yeah, you know, TV yeah. reboot. Is, hey. is Cos going to be a con? Uh, things are not looking too good for him. <laughs> and we, we may get to our philosophical uh, topic. Uh, Connors are our expert on that should you ever talk to the cops we may have a surprising answer so those are our big stories uh we are going to get to our usual hot tub time machine our sound bite from the past we're honoring 1968 uh this e- this month uh, 50 years ago right. so we're going to dip into the past and we're going to give you a sound bite it's probably the most bizarre political sound bite in history from 1968 that's all i'll tell you mm-hmm. at the end of the show we'll get to that and of course we always have two moron of the week candidates Candidates, one at the top of the show, one at the bottom. We will vote on who is most moronic at the end of the show. So let me give you the top of the show moron, Mm -hmm. a candidate. Uh, Now, this woman is from Houston. Uh, she is named Krishanda Williams. She was a 911 operator. Very important job, you know. You've got to be highly trained and you're yeah. going to be saving lives. Yeah. She has been found guilty of hanging up on people over and over after about 10 to 15 seconds. Just Hanging up on 911 emergency calls. Her supervisor noticed an unusual (laughs) number of short calls. These were robberies. These are homicides. These are speeding vehicles. And you know what her excuse was? She just... She didn't want to talk to anybody uh, every once in a while. What a, what a perfect profession. Then, yeah, really, exactly. Know? So I consider her a, a strong candidate yeah. for moron of so. the week. Can, yeah. you, can you imagine, by the way, she had to call 911 and somebody hung up on her? Just yeah. To, oh, that would I be mean, justice. Yeah. Her lawyer says she was going through a hard time. She was a poor performing worker. That's lawyer speak for her. Oh, my right. God, she's killing this people. This case is really bad. He says, but punishing her doesn't do anything to fix the problems that still exist at the emergency center. What? Well, thanks for the help, pal. We'll work on those problems, but first, yeah. we're going to put her in prison. When somebody commits a robbery, punishing that person doesn't fix the fact that robberies exist, so let's not do it. Well, that's you know what? That's like the old Rodney Dangerfield joke. He called suicide prevention, then they put him on hold. <laughs> he got no yeah. respect. Yeah. No respect. So so uh, before we get to our top stories, Michael Cohen and the cause and so on, uh, we'd like to get uh, a couple of the, the bizarre stories uh, from around the nation. Uh, perhaps you guys have heard of this. This is not fair to the South. I know we like to make fun <laughs> of the South sometimes. We would never do that. The headline, Poop Train Full of New York City Sewage Raises Stink in Alabama Oh, town. no. <laughs> yeah, Alabama mayor says her small town smells like rotting corpses more than two months after New York City's so-called poop train we're, rolled in. And as the next New Yorker, we were happy to say. 
send it. Stop, okay. stop saying poop train. I can't. I am just reading what's in the news, Connor. It's oh. not like I make this stuff up. Why don't we so work in the news it so was we a can little, write poop train? It was a little it. gift from the the, uh, the Big Apple to the great state of Alabama. Probably a little Jeffrey Sessions, uh, you know, poking at him. Mm -hmm. It's in Parrish, Alabama. A stinking train load of human waste <laughs> from New York is stranded in a tiny Alabama town, spreading a stench like a giant backed-up toilet. This guy's like Hemingway. Uh, Associated Press. Uh, it was the best of reporter. times. It was the worst <laughs> of <laughs> That's and, right. <laughs> That's Dickens, I think. But. So, right, uh, exactly. And the poop train is just the latest example of the South being used as a dumping ground for other states' waste. I Did mean, you guys know this is a scandal? I, population yeah. wise, that may be true. I, now, I, now, see, that's okay, the kind I'm of attitude. Sorry. I, yeah, oh, I'll sorry. take every cheap shot available. Royal Oak Show is big in Mississippi Real and Alabama. Bad, that's right. So, we don't want to tick off people. Uh, I, I'll take every shot possible to okay. make fun of uh, people who are in any way different than I am. But this does seem unfair. The idea the that top. we would cart actual, literal human waste into someone else's... Oh, that's how you referred to it. I, I use different words. Yeah, the poop train. That's way better. You're right. The, why? Why? How is this well, the best way the deal. to dispose it, of There's just a tendency. They, they just like to go to the south. In Parrish, Alabama, mm -hmm. population 982, the sludge-hauling train cars have sat idle near the Little League ball fields for oh, two months. God. The smell is unbearable, <laughs> especially around dusk after the atmosphere has become heated, according to the mayor. Oh, my Goodness, it's just a nightmare here. Well, it smells like rotten corpses. There goes our one Mississippi viewer. It smells like death. Uh, All they kinds they of could have made it into a tourist attraction. Well, honestly, what's the matter? Here's the problem. It's train. a scandal. I, I want to see John that. Oliver talk about this. Yeah. He gets on his high horse about climate yeah. change and all this other stuff. <laughs> and <laughs> now this. Yeah, all kinds of waste have been dumped in Georgia. Uh, You're a fan, I can tell. Yeah, yeah I like have been dumped, dumped in Georgia, Georgia, Alabama, and other southern states, including toxic coal ash from power plants around the nation. In Parrish, folks are considering rescheduling kids' softball games, playing at fields in other communities to escape the stink. Yeah, I'd be would rescheduling York, ever going outside. Would New York City like us to send all our poop up there forever? <laughs> By the way, does it say, do we know how that train landed in Alabama? No, all crazy? I don't know. It just seems And how wrong. they got stuck with it? The mayor sometimes dabs peppermint oil under her nose oh because God. the smell is that so bad. That is the most southern thing I've ever heard. The sludge smells oh of God. dead, rotten animals as well as human waste. By the way, that belongs the song Sweet Home Alabama, doesn't it? <laughs> You know, uh, barges of waste have been uh, turned away by North Carolina, Alabama, Louisiana, Texas, Mexico, Belize, and the Bahamas. Apparently, there's a tendency, maybe gravity just takes this stuff down. <laughs> wow. From yeah. the, anyway, I just think it's, it, it's, it's a very unpleasant situation. Wow. Another unpleasant situation is we lost Art Bell this last week. Yeah. Legendary mm -hmm. disc jockey and talk show host. If you if you ever listen to this guy, he's just this mellifluous, wonderful voice. And Sorry, all night, uh, did you say mellifluous? Yeah. And uh, Literally? For the okay. for the one person out there who doesn't know what that word is, and not for me at all. Right. Could you right. define uh, mal uh, uh, that uh, real, real, real smooth? Angelina Thank Jolie's you, Porky Pig. Mean, yeah. This guy would talk all night <laughs> okay, about all right. UFOs. That's what it means. Okay. All right. Yeah. No. No. I mean, he very smooth. Right. And right, right. Dulcet smooth tones. And, dulcet and now you want me to define dulcet, don't you? Yeah. No. Uh, but I enjoyed listening occasionally, even though you know they talked about uh, uh, astral projection, where people seriously thought you were really into him, aren't you? Yeah. There was a way that you could actually go to like another solar system yeah. or Jupiter yeah. in an instant yeah. and he seemed to be sincerely believing all drugs. this stuff yeah, they were dead. That takes he, right uh, at he he broadcasted from his double wide trailer in the Pahrump and Pahrump yeah. yeah. hard for the government to find it if one night around. he and his wife were driving <laughs> home when a 150 foot triangular craft silently hovered over their car right. before disappearing I wonder if he had like a measuring stick or something yeah. how would he know no he's that? just confused that's Elon Musk's new he was a DJ. <laughs> he was a DJ in yeah. Vietnam. He was like the original Good Morning Vietnam mm -hmm. guy. Robin he Royce. set a record: 116 hours to raise money to ferry stranded Vietnamese orphans from Saigon to the U.S. And he claimed a record of 57 hours of uninterrupted broadcasting while seesawing. He's in the Guinness Book of Records for that. Well, that career, wow. his career had its ups and downs, so that oh. I can understand Ooh. that. Ooh. Too, but, soon, uh, um, yeah, too soon, Ken. Too soon. He's just, so R.I.P. Okay, Art Bell. But apparently yeah. there's another DJ type who died this week who I never heard of, some Swedish guy with a, a, a yeah. exotic name. Yeah, well, his stage name is exotic. His name is Avicii, and he uh, passed away. Um, I believe yesterday would be now at this point. Um, and what was he famous for? Because he wasn't on he, my radar He screen. really took electronic dance music or EDM into the mainstream about 
five, six, seven years ago. He was really on the front of that, and he took these super high-energy sort of half EDM, half pop songs that you could play on the radio. Even They're not purely dance at a rave songs. And he, you know, upbeat, positive lyrics, had a great message. People liked it. Um, and really, you'll hear him. You'll hear and you'll say, oh, yeah, I know. I you know heard that at the gym a hundred times right. absolutely he uh, unfortunately had been struggling with alcoholism since he started touring you know when he was like 17 18 years old mm -hmm. um, and he uh, had multiple surgeries one to remove his pancreas and gallbladder recently he oh, was that's a shame. In serious well, so we lost Art now, Bell we lost straight. Avicii so it's a sad day in that week now here's another aspect of the week and I don't know if it's sad or not but people talk about discrimination you know women shouldn't be allowed to discriminate against men and vice versa there's an entrepreneur named Christina Roth she's mm -hmm. some huge big bucks uh, dot com person sure. she has purchased an island just off of Finland it's called Super She Island you know why it's called Super She Island Island. No guys allowed, okay? It's a resort thing. You go there to relax and, and you know, rent a spa situation. Yeah, yeah. No, no women. No now, dudes. are no, we no okay yeah, yeah. with this? It's only for women. It's <laughs> a, it's an 8.4 acre island, Finnish saunas, yoga, meditation. Nice, nice. Uh, it, it's like when you walk, it's blueberry fields forever. I thought yeah. it was strawberry Strive. fields. Yeah, forever. I thought it was strawberry. Swedish yeah. version. A Finnish version is, is blueberry. So <laughs> uh, she says, I'm a computer scientist. She's explaining that no men. She said, how many times did I have to listen to Hey, Blondie, what are you doing here? So she's put up with discrimination. Right. But is it okay for her to discriminate? Connor, if you wanted to go to this fancy Finnish island and relax in the spa, she would say, sorry, mister, that's true. you can't come. You're right. She would say that. Do you and think that's okay? I, yeah, I do. I, I, I think that you got to take the context of these things uh, into account and say, uh, in the same way that I'm in support of affirmative action but would not be in support of the flip side of affirmative action, given historical context and where our society's been forever, that these sorts of things can exist for some amount of time and uh, as long as conditions so persist in our society such that women have places mm. that are their own. I mean, it's not like... But uh, it wouldn't be okay for you to buy the island and say no girls allowed. No, I think that that would be more problematic. I think that we've got enough boys clubs, uh, literal and figurative, I, not, in this I'm society and world that we live in. You know, it just, it just uh, it goes to show you, it just proves the adage that uh, no man is an island. Ooh, oh, I like that. God. I like that. No that was pretty well, good. Well, nobody's like threatening that. to that sewer, good. and maybe... The I'm here all week, by the way, try the veal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, Who's gonna okay. sue her? What's I mean? It's, it's Finnish too. This is not yeah, American exactly. law. Exactly. Yeah, it's a Finnish law. Okay. Exactly. All right. So the other story I wanted to cover before we get to our, our super high-profile headlines. Uh, maybe you heard about this guy. Um, he he had a a, pro a go karting accident and he uh, broke his ankle. Mm. So he needed sure. a painkiller. So right. he takes Natural. this drug Lyrica, and he claims it turned him gay. He had a girlfriend. The go-karting? He thoroughly the heterosexual. The drug. Uh, the drug. The, the go-karting. Go you see it advertised on TV all the time. Lyrica. Really? Right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it did. It's yeah, a major did. drug. I don't watch yeah. it on daytime TV. So he's 23 years old. His name With is Scott too. Purdy. He's described in the article as unemployed Scott Purdy. That's a little That's harsh. That's cruel. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> he said he was a hot-blooded heterosexual and enjoyed dating women right. before he started taking Lyrica. I don't get it. And he I claims he lost his sexual attraction to women. Uh, and he broke up with his girlfriend of six months right. uh, when he took this prescription drug. How did, I, how apparently did he he's gonna, thinking of filing a suit to warn people Wh this might happen. I, I don't understand. How can he possibly pinpoint it to the painkiller pill he's been taking? Well, you think it's a coincidence, Connor? Why, I mean, why not he's a hot-blooded heterosexual his whole the, life for the 23 years. The trauma of a, a dangerous go-karting crash. He I saw his know. life flash before his eyes, and he, he says, saw boob, boob, boob. What a waste he, of time. Well, no, I'm gay, <laughs> he you said, know, I'd but. never been interested in men. When I was younger, I was a bit curious, but a couple of weeks after okay, I started right, the Lyrica, okay. it turned around, and I, he said, I really don't know what's happening to me. I mm. told my girlfriend I like men, and I just can't be All right, with you. hot-blooded heterosexual well, you know, who has had some thoughts in the past. Let me yes, tell you Ken? from another hot-blooded heterosexual, uh, uh, no. Ken's got a good final th Yeah, good thing uh, he didn't try Ben Gay. <laughs> Sorry. He said, uh, I'd Sorry. been taking it for a few weeks, and I came for the realiz to the realization that when I take it, I want males. Apparently, I'm talking, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, talking yeah. to this lad on Plenty of Fish, whatever that, wherever that is. Well, that's a website. And in a couple of weeks, I'm going to see website. him. He's in London. Ladies Good and gentlemen, this when guy. we come back, Stormy Daniels on the Royal Oak Show. We'll be back on CRN with the Royal Oak Show. You're experiencing pain.
pain, back pain, shoulder, elbow, or hand pain, pain from a sports injury? If so, schedule a visit with Dr. Michael Sheps, the leading expert in laser therapy for pain management. Call 310-873-4422 or go to drsheps.com. Experience Epic T, the breakthrough laser therapy system that Dr. Sheps developed to make you pain-free in less time. Laser therapy is a non-invasive, safe, and effective in-office procedure that penetrates deep into your skin without damaging the tissue. It perfectly targets areas of pain to promote fast, natural healing. Relax your muscles ease muscle spasms, joint stiffness, and arthritis pain while increasing blood circulation. For over 25 years, Dr. Sheps has helped Olympic athletes and sports enthusiasts alike get back in the game. Schedule your visit with Dr. Sheps at his Brentwood office in California. Call 310-873-4422 or visit drsheps.com. That's D-R-S-H-E-P-S.com, 310-873-4422. Hi, friends. This is Larry Minetti. Go to LarryMinetti.com to get my book, Aloha Magnum. You'll read all about the wonderful guest stars like Carol Burnett, Elvis Presley, Frank Sinatra, and many, many more. There is an episode guide and my favorite recipes that I really cook at home. I will include a free signed photo with every book. Get Aloha Magnum at LarryMinetti.com. Order now. Aloha. The legends of Kaanapali Luau at the Kaanapali Beach Hotel will take your breath away with an abundant feast, spellbinding dances, and music from Le Pono Productions. Be greeted with a lei and browse to see island crafts made by local artisans. As you hear the poo or conch shell blow, your luau experience will begin. The featured entree is a whole roasted pig and a bountiful menu of some of Hawaii's favorite food choices. Oh, you can't forget our famous made in house taro poi. As your night comes, to an end under the spell of the moon. Be amazed by the famous firewalk. By the end of the night, you'll be full and we hope you'll have made new friends and some forever memories while you continue to listen to music from Maui's local Hawaiian musicians every Monday night at Hawaii's most Hawaiian hotel. Kanapali Beach Hotel voted best Aloha Spirit by Hawaii Magazine readers. Call 667-0128 or visit legendsofkaanapali.com for your exciting island adventure. Trying to sell your old car? Instead, donate your vehicle to Heritage for the Blind. Pickup is free and your donation is tax deductible. Just call 1-800-785-9618. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats, whether they run or not. Call right now and receive a free three-day vacation voucher to over 50 locations. Call 1-800-785-9618. Donate your car today. That's 1-800-785-9618. Welcome back to the Royal Oak Show with our co-host Ken Jeffries and our correspondent Connor Oaks. So we're honoring Queen today. All of our bumper music is by Queen. You guys happen to know the name of the, the tune here? This iconic well, tune? She just sang it. I mean, we are the champions. It's like well, cheating. sometimes, you know, it's just because they say That's words true. doesn't it mean be. it's the title. Yeah. We are the champions. So. Yeah, no, they're a fantastic uh, song, an uh, mm-hmm. iconic group. So, gosh, we talked about losing Art Bell. We talked about uh, losing Avicii, the Swedish DJ, and, of course, Barbara Bush, a first lady, uh, and a lot of uh, wonderful plaudits for her about her her remarkable career. And I, I guess uh, Melania Trump uh, represented uh, the yeah, administration at the funeral. Mm-hmm. I wonder, are you thinking, guys, maybe the president thought it would be a little awkward given the whole low-energy jeb and the, yeah. uh, the uh, uh, acrimonious yeah. nature of the campaign? It is, it is appropriate to send a first First lady to another first lady's funeral. Yeah, I guess. Makes sense. but uh, yes, I think it would have been very it would awkward for him to, I to think be there. If Trump started avoiding official functions at which he might run into politicians whose family members he has personally insulted, he would never leave uh, his bedroom. <laughs> yeah, probably true. Uh, you see the fawning article Ted Cruz wrote about Trump. What? It, uh, I don't remember. I remember it was where he wrote it or where he published it. But th- this guy, Trump literally said your dad helped kill Kennedy mm-hmm. and it's right. called your wife ugly it and is, you yeah. came out and had some strong statement and now you're licking his boots like Cruz 
I know you're actual scum, but like have yeah. some spine. Well, he's, at a, least. he's in a tough Senate race in Texas right now. Yeah. Maybe that's he it. Is. That he's is in a very tough Senate race in Texas. Maybe he wants totally to make right. nice. But yes. Barbara Bush, I mean, when you think about it, what a an amazing public life, and she always handled herself self with great dignity. I mean, you got the feeling that she was a real fighter for the family. But I mean, I, she marries this guy who I guess was the son of Prescott Bush. So George Bush's dad was a senator well, pre- back in right, the twenties. You senator, right? Yeah, and so she probably knew that she was headed for this kind of public <laughs> life. But, I mean, first lady and, you know, matriarch, you know, mother of another president. I mean, that's a long time to be in the public glare. And I think yeah. she handled herself really well over the decades. Yeah. There was one thing, and I know it's we were, didn't talk about it beforehand, but there was it, it is a legal issue, I think, with that uh, professor at Fresno State who made disparaging comments about Barbara oh, yeah. Bush on Twitter. And I forgot. Calling her no, I forgot. racist and saying, you know, and saying, F all those nice yeah, and, words. And, and, and then saying, right, and then saying, you can't fire me. I have tenure. <laughs> right. What do you, I, I wanted to get your take on that, take of you guys on that, to see what you thought about that. Reminds you of the Ward Churchill thing, where he called everybody little Nazis who died in 9-11, and right. everybody was totally outraged. And there was a debate over, well, yeah. okay, he's a creep. Do we fire him because of it? Right. What about free speech? Right. It, it's tough. I she, mean, she I, can't personally, fired, I don't right? mind firing guys that show themselves to be you know, totally devoid of any sensibility and common sense. But some people stepped up and said, oh, no, you know, let him let him speak his mind. And if he's a good professor, then we'll keep him. Yeah, it, it's certainly hard to separate. I mean, if, if he gets glowing professorial reviews, it makes sense for some... Some school to bite the bullet and keep him on despite the horrible press uh, that uh, he's bringing to the Fresno school. Fresno State is, says, I think it's losing, or some people said they're not going to donate anymore to Fresno State because of this. Yeah, and, I mean, that's a real repercussion. And understand. a lot of people would say that those are the proper repercussions, that you want to promote free speech and to have people be able to speak their minds even if they're crazy and say the wrong thing and uh, speak ill of the dead immediately following the dead's death but so, it's you know it it makes sense that people would stop supporting the institutions that they're a part of because of the, their speech speaking in this and it's uh, speaking of institutions we're all a part of hey, here we go starbucks yeah. uh, yes, we're, we're all drinking very it ashamed. and we should be ashamed. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you guys think uh they're gonna shut down on like may 29 what yeah. the right. whole day yeah the entire no, day no, uh, the afternoon starting at 2 p.m on okay so a half day or whatever yeah. for training and sensitivity yeah. and so on yeah. my problem is i didn't really get a clear picture about mm-hmm. What happened before these two young black men were escorted out? W- you know, was there any kind of trouble? Apparently, they weren't buying anything, and so some rocket scientist who works for or, or Starbucks decided, well, if you're not going to buy anything and you're going to stand here and be black, I guess I'm going to escort yeah, you out and, and call and call the police. Yeah, I mean, well, didn't he like know that. he was inviting trouble? Absolutely, and and that's sort of the problem is everybody's reaction. Um, I would say I would describe it as a uh, white Twitter's reaction to this. You know, what instant- do you mean white Twitter. How do you know? Yeah, as in black Twitter and white Twitter. Uh, There's are black people is that another, By the way, is that another yeah. website? White Twitter. Uh, yeah, is white people the, on white, Twitter. Yeah. I'll say white, is is the subdivision. And, uh, among that group, everybody's response was, "Okay, so what happened? What was the provocation? What was the thing before? Must there have been something. Must right? have been something." And everybody on the black half of Twitter is going. Uh, have you We're been, not surprised. Have you been in America? <laughs> it, there did not have to be something. There have was been nothing. In America? Oh, yeah, it yeah, just yeah. happens. We're just persecuted, called out for no reason other than living while black. Hashtag living while black. All right. So, <laughs> okay, so black uh, Twitter and white Twitter uh, have a knee-jerk reaction, but aren't we all kind of speculating? Because do any of us really know what preceded, whether there was any well, you've rational got, explanation you've got for witnesses? calling the police? No, right. that's Why the couldn't the the owner have just found out, so you're waiting for somebody? Is, is that why you're not buying? Because sometimes, yeah, oh, no, we don't right. want to order, sir, because our friends aren't here at, yeah, you know, Sizzler it. yet. Right. That's a thing. It is. Why wasn't it a thing I at Starbucks? Know. Exactly. Exactly. That's why it's a national news story is because there was no reason, absolutely no reason. And what became, you know, a national issue was that everybody's looking for a reason instead of just saying, oh, wow, this actually really does happen. We've been trying to talk about the size of Stormy Daniel's bosom for a half hour, and we haven't gotten to it. Well, we'll keep the rest of that gentlemen, in a minute. Wow. After Sorry, the break, we'll we will. CRN with the Royal Oak Show. Hi, everyone. This is Fred Dreyer with a big announcement. My new movie, Highway 395, has just been released. Don't miss this classic modern-day western set along Highway 395 in California. It's an action thriller with some romance, too. You can own Highway 395 today by going to my brand-new website, fredreyer.co. That's fredreyer.co. Get my new movie, Highway 395, and check out my new website, fredreyer.co. 
Do you owe back taxes to the IRS? News flash, the president has changed the tax laws. And now, you may be able to pay the IRS less. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, the tax doctor can help you pay the IRS as little as possible allowed by law. There are new tax laws for business owners, the self-employed, even W-2 workers. If you have a back tax problem or a few years of unfilled returns, new help to save you money is now here. Call right now to see how the new tax tax laws can help you. Plus, right now, we'll waive the consultation fee and give you a free tax savings report. Attention business owners, the self-employed, and W-2 workers. Make this free call to the tax doctor now and learn how to take advantage of the new tax laws that may help you pay the IRS less. 800-985-1610. 800-985-1610. 800-985-1610. That's 800-985-1610. Robert Conrad fans, listen up. From 1965 to 1969, it was nonstop excitement with Robert Conrad as James T. West and Ross Martin as Artemis Gordon in the Wild Wild West TV show. 30 years have passed since the first release of the Wild Wild West, the series book. And now, a new book is back and better than ever. Susan Kessler and her team put together thousands of hours of research, great photographs, interviews with original members, and so much more. The first edition was long considered a collector's dream. Now you can order the brand new 30th anniversary print edition online at wildwildwestbook.com for $38.95. The information remains, but there's more pictures. They're in color, 650 sketches and photographs, and so much more. Jim and Artie live again in the Wild Wild West, the series 30th anniversary edition. Go to wildwildwestbook.com. Order it today, wildwildwestbook.com, and have Robert Conrad in your home tonight. You order a glass of your favorite Cabernet, fresh asparagus, hollandaise on the side, a filet, medium rare. You unfurl your napkin with a flare, close your eyes, and prepare to listen. Ah, there it is. The sweet music you long to hear. The sizzle. The sizzle of a Roots Chris steak. The most magnificent corn-fed prime beef, broiled to perfection at 1,800 degrees. Some call it a sizzle. We call it an anthem. As the waiter approaches, you think, is this one mine or that one? Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. Like Ruth always said, life's too short to eat anywhere else. Make a reservation online at rootschris.com or by calling 800-544-0808. Trying to sell your old car? Instead, donate your vehicle to Heritage for the Blind. Pickup is free and your donation is tax deductible. Just call one 1- 800-785-9618. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats, whether they run or not. Call right now and receive a free three-day vacation voucher to over 50 locations. Call 1-800-785-9618. Donate your car today. That's 1-800-785-9618. Welcome back to the Royal Oak Show with our co-host Ken Jeffries, our millennial correspondent, Connor Oaks. And once again, Queen is uh, bringing us back from our uh, little break. You guys know the name of this one? Another one bites the dust. Another, another one bites the dust. Or as Weird Al Yankovic said, another one rides the bus. That was one <laughs> of his right. parodies. Yeah. Weird, Al so is good. Fan- yes. Weird Al is fantastic. So Michael Cohen, uh, Trump's lawyer, he's been his fixer for a dozen years. He's in trouble on both coasts. On the East Coast, uh, they have seized his a dozen electronic devices with all sorts of communications with Trump and his other clients. And so he's trying to, to keep that suppressed. Uh, and actually, the judge made a decent ruling for him. Judge Kimba Wood, who was going to be uh, a Clinton appointee in the 90s, but she had an illegal nanny, apparently, Remember or that. at least there were some questions. So now she's been on the federal bench for, for some 20 years. And she said, you know, I'm going to hold a hearing after I get an inventory of your allegedly attorney-client privilege documents uh, being examined by the dirty team. I'm going to get an inventory, and I may appoint a special master to go through it to make sure your your rights are protected. So that's good for him. That's, that's pushed into late May. And he got more good news yesterday here in federal court in Los Angeles when James Otero, the federal judge, 
sounds sympathetic to the idea that his Fifth Amendment rights are at issue. Yeah. And so what he's saying is, you know, I, I may well put Stormy's lawsuit on the shelf pending the outcome of the New York criminal stuff because if you've got a criminal thing hanging over your head, you might have to claim the Fifth Amendment in the civil suit here in L.A., which isn't fair. That justifies putting the civil suit on hold. And as a result of that, and plus he hasn't seen the documents, Cohen, uh, that are, have been seized, uh, he does, they're no longer in his possession. So as it's I, really, It's really interesting to me to see how he may be having such a good procedural week in terms of slowing things down, right. giving Cohen. himself to Cohen, more yeah. time to breathe. But he had such a bad press week mm-hmm. with the earlier revelation that his mystery third client was Sean Hannity. When, when he goes in there, and, and people probably had no idea why are we talking about his other clients, but he's in there, the government's making the argument that he's not really Trump's lawyer at all. They're not really, they're, they're saying he's much more of a fixer, make these women who, who have affairs uh, with these powerful men go away, right. shut up, a, a threat of personal harm or money one way or another. Right. He's the fixer. He's not really an attorney in any way. And part of, and thus they shouldn't have attorney client privilege over these documents. And therefore, you know, they get to see everything. The, the Mueller's team actually gets to see everything. Everything and then, right. So the judge says, well, are you a fixer or are you an attorney? Show me your clients because you've got to know if you have real clients. How many clients do you really have? And he goes, oh, I have three. Three clients. Who are you? Finally, he, they, they, there was some resistance. Oh, so he opened, his mouth, he opened his mouth and said three. Yeah, well, they, the, the judge asked him how many you've got. And he comes out, it's Donald J. Trump. It's uh, a Republican National Committee. Elliot Broidy, a big who, financial guy. Financial guy who had to resign whatever post it was he's holding uh, because of... Uh, he impregnated a woman. A was relationship it, he, he, had he had. And a, what, it was some crazy that thing. Cohen handled the money-fixing situation yeah, the money for. Thing. And then client number three. And then client mystery client number three, Sean Hannity. Gasp in the courtroom, such high drama. Of course, well, we don't like the know, dating game, you know? Yeah. Like, we don't really know what the nature of the relationship was. Right. At first, Hannity was saying, you know, I never had him as a lawyer. I didn't pay him a fee. But then Hannity said, I might have given him 10 bucks to establish an attorney-client privilege like they do in the movies. He's not my lawyer, but I want attorney-client privilege. Did he say 10 bucks? Did yes. He, did he, the, Hannity literally said $10. What, what client would give a lawyer 10 bucks? Is that uh, legal well, to do? The reason I mentioned the movie is sometimes you've seen in movie scenes somebody says, uh, for example, Better Call Saul, uh, mm-hmm. He, he mm-hmm. Would, uh, the Breaking Bad lawyer, he would say, give me a dollar. And the guy said, okay, here's a dollar. Now you've paid me. Uh, now, now I'm your, now I'm your attorney. Which is fun TV law, but you yeah. don't need to pay a lawyer for him to be your now lawyer. Now tell me about this uh, flipping business in terms of Trump, because oh, yeah. I hadn't heard that. Uh, according to Associated Press, uh, Trump said this morning in a series of tweets while Mel- Melania was at Barbara Bush's funeral, I don't know if president anything else to do saying something oh, I'm, I'm going to try and quote from the ap story if i can uh I, I'm, I'm going to repeat it It says president uh, trump said uh, today he didn't expect michael cohen his longtime personal lawyer and fixer to quote flip end quote as the government investigates cohen's <laughs> business dealings i what mean weird series of say. tweets doesn't that imply that he's got something to say if he yeah, were to flip exactly why a, are you that's the guiltiest thing any human's ever said there's, there's just a little more and then I'll, then I'll wrap it up and it says uh, Trump in a series of tweets fly, fired off from Florida uh, in the morning of Barbara Bush's funeral accused the New York Times and one of its reporters, Maggie Haberman, by the way, mm-hmm. of uh, going out of their way to destroy Michael Cohen quote, and, and his relationship with me, Trump, in the hopes that he will flip, end of quote. And it says a term that can mean cooperating with the government in exchange for leniency. And he said, oh, just a little more, most people will flip if the government lets them out of trouble even if it means lying or making up stories. Quote from Trump. And then he Thanks. added one more thing. Sorry, I don't see Michael doing that, despite the horrible witch hunt and the dishonest media. End quote. Wow. New York <coughs> Times tweeted back saying they stand by Haberman's story. But yeah. that's another story. Wow. Wow. That's another story. With, uh, you know. All right. So more just, more political and, uh, and legal uh, uh, nexus here this last week. The Democratic National Committee sued right. Donald Trump Jr., sued Manafort, did not sue the president. Uh, sued a bunch of Russians, the Russian spy agency. So they filed a federal lawsuit back east, and basically they're putting forth their theory about hacking and collusion by the Trump people with the Russians in a legal context. And some folks were digging up the Watergate past and noting that, well, the Democratic Committee actually sued the Republican Nixon Committee in 1972 after the Watergate break-in. 
But the thing that's interesting to me here is I think this is just an example of the Democrats learning. Well, maybe we don't control the White House and either uh, side of Congress or really the Supreme Court, but doggone it, we can file a lawsuit. And mm-hmm. there are some judges who are receptive to our arguments, and they've just been hitting home runs yeah. on travel ban and immigration for, right. the better, for, for a sure. year. So here, the, by filing a suit, they force a lot of people, parties and non-parties, to give deposition testimony yep. sworn under oath. Mm-hmm. Uh, parties and non-parties can be forced to produce documents, mm-hmm. and you can subpoena non-parties. Uh, plus, they now have power in a judge and a jury, as opposed to the prosecutors or Trump or you know, the Congress. And they can appeal to public opinion if they rack up some wins. So I guess it's a smart thing to do, although some people could say, do we want more lawsuits? Don't we have enough investigations going on? But there's going to be one more in the form of a lawsuit. I mean, this is a, I think it's a, it's a great PR move because everything that they're doing in this civil suit is essentially under the preponderance of the evidence standard. Anything that they win on... They only have to, or want to win on, they only have to show that the evidence is in their favor 51%, basically. They, well, uh, actually. So that's a lot easier than all these Mueller investigations and all these criminal actions, which are all criminal actions and therefore beyond a reasonable doubt. So if they want to get something on the record in the public eye, PR-wise, right. that, yeah, there's proof of something, a judge and a jury found uh, for us on our side of things, they're going to want to do it in a civil suit context So, it's so like because this. it requires less proof, right? Yeah, less, exactly. less proof, okay. Smart. Yeah. So it's it's going to go forward, and uh, although you know we were talking about the criminal versus the civil, uh, the criminal slowing down the civil in the Michael Cohen context, you could see the same situation here. For example, Paul Manafort is a defendant in this suit. Absolutely. He's going to say... Uh, the DNC has sued me. You think I'm going to be in a position to cooperate, answer questions in deposition? It's I true. got the Fifth Amendment. It's true. Uh, so it, it's going to be kind of ugly. Uh, more criminal problems this week for Andrew McCabe. And this is such a convoluted story, but, yeah. but I think people are, are, should be into it. So Andrew McCabe was the number two guy at the FBI mm-hmm. under Comey. Mm-hmm. His wife was running for a position in Virginia and took big bucks from Terry McAuliffe, Democrat right. governor in Virginia, big pal of the Clintons. Okay, so she's running, so she's getting Clinton money. Right. But hubby, Andrew, was in charge of the Hillary Clinton server investigation for the FBI at the same time she was taking Clinton money. So people say, well, is that right? So the Wall Street Journal runs a story to this effect about two weeks before the 2016 election, saying, oh, Andrew McCabe, you know, his wife and Hillary investigation. What happens one week later? Another story in the journal about Andrew McCabe. And this one says, Andrew McCabe, heroic number two guy at the FBI, is battling the Clinton Foundation, trying to investigate their perfidy and dishonesty, and he's fighting against people inside the DOJ who like Hillary. That second story came out. So what's what's the big deal? The big deal is he leaked that second story. Andrew McCabe leaked the information to the journal. Now, is that a crime? Probably not. It's not classified information. But then he lied about whether he was the leaker four times to federal investigators over the next 12 months. That's not and good. that's why they fired him. The inspector general has said, this guy lied four times. That's a felony each time. And Comey and McCabe disagree. Comey says... He never told me he leaked to this. And, in fact, McCabe says, oh, I went to the boss, I went to Comey, and I said, I'm going to leak this to the Wall Street Journal. Is that okay? And, according to McCabe, Comey said, that's fine. So they're battling against each other. Now the bottom line is the inspector general has referred this to the U.S. attorney in the District of Columbia, and the D.C. guys have to decide whether to prosecute Andrew McCabe. Got to sort it out. So who knows whether it's going to go forward, but both McCabe and Comey are going to be key witnesses in what's probably the soft underbelly of Trump. I think, you know, unless there's some smoking gun collusion evidence, the obstruction is where it's all at yeah, oh, about absolutely. when it comes to Trump's culpability and possible impeachment when the Democrats take over the House and yeah. so on. But the obstruction you, is the big crime, not right, not collusion. I think that's Remember right. Remember we talked and, about be- and, before. Yeah. yeah, and so the question is, is it is it bad for this case against Trump for Comey and McCabe to both be pointing fingers at each other? And in addition to McCabe's criminal problems, this week the suggestion came out Maybe Comey's in trouble, because remember when he took his memos and he gave them to his pal at Columbia Law? He said, would you please leak these to the New York Times? And this guy was a former prosecutor, Mm -hmm. like Comey, and he did. Turns out there's a suggestion the stuff inside those memos was at least in part classified, and that's a crime as well. It would be. 
So could Comey be prosecuted? Exactly right. That's a distinct possibility. So, and, and then there's this book out, too. Now, does the book throw a monkey wrench into any of this? Or, well, the uh, book is basically it's based on Comey's notes, his, uh, the memos that he kept. And so those were the substance that, was given to, that were given to the, uh, the professor friend that were then leaked to the press. And so the notes are, I mean, the book is just like a surface-level re-skin of the underlying notes themselves, which allegedly, allegedly contain some classified information. We don't have an idea even of what information in there would have been the classified stuff that would, was, a, was a crime to have leaked. But there's the suggestion, at least, that, it, that it, some of it was. Well, lots of, lots of issues swirling around on yes, Russia. Yeah. Uh, talk about swirling issues. Uh, Cosby's trial continues in Pennsylvania. And the latest, you know, we've gotten in the new news of five more women testifying, yeah, he, he drugged me and then he sexually abused me. Uh, we've gotten in the evidence of Andrea Constand got $3.4 million in her civil settlement. We've gotten in the evidence of her pal Marguerite Jackson, her fellow Temple University uh, employee, who says, you know, Andrea told me right around this time she was going to make up a story about a celebrity to make a lot of money. I'm going to quit this job. I'm going to be able to say to the man, yeah. take this job and shove it. So all of that's swirling around. And now the latest information is the judge decided he didn't know how to go on this. He decided, okay, I'm going to let the depot take testimony and the deposition testimony by Cosby where he said, well, yeah, I used quaaludes on women with whom I'd like to have sex. So the jury, how would you like to be on the jury in this kind of case? Here's this iconic, super popular guy before yeah. it all hit. Right. He's really, you know, a, a real American hero. And all of this evidence, one lady saying, oh, yeah, no, she was going to make it up. Five women saying, oh, essentially he raped me. Fifty-five women out there in, in the ether saying the same thing happened. How are they going to agree and can 12 people agree? I mean, they couldn't agree after the first trial. Yeah, they may not be able to agree on this one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm Maybe just not. wondering if I it's mean, going to be too tough to reach the unanimous agreement. It, it is certainly, it, these are wild accusations. On, and on both sides, there's such bizarre evidence. But at the, at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, I think the lawyers are going to be able to make good arguments and say, look, the credibility of this one woman or that one woman or that one woman might be in doubt. But we've got this extremely damning testimony as to Cosby, and even it's still a crime for somebody to be sexually assaulted if that person still had the intent to blackmail the other person. Right. She didn't intend to be sexually assaulted. There, I mean, even if you say, even if you admitted to the jury and said she was looking to get into Cosby's house, do something in Cosby's house, and then sue him or you know extort him for a lot of money later. That doesn't justify or prove that it didn't happen, that he sexually assaulted her in the meantime. Yep. So that's the wildness. Oh, I mean, yeah. nobody might be, I mean, even if nobody's a good guy in this scenario, he might still be guilty. Well, we'll probably know in a week or two. Hey, last week, guys, we resolved this, this long-standing philosophical question about mm -hmm. whether chimpanzees are people, okay? Yeah. Now, this week, we have another chimp issue. It's actually a monkey issue. Right. Um, may a monkey sue? Yeah. So uh, in 2011, an Indonesian monkey named Naruto, I'm not sure why he has a name, but he does, he happened to notice an unattended camera. So he starts taking a bunch of pictures. Yeah. Apparently he's hanging around tourists all the time, so this monkey knows how to you know, handle a well, monkey. So, monkey. So what yeah, happens monkey is the monkey, walks, <laughs> right. the monkey walks up and sees a shiny plastic mm -hmm. ob object with a lens no, and such, he, and he, he picked it up. He adjusted, you know, for the... Oh, yeah, absolutely. Lock. Set the filter. The, he chose the, the, his perfect Snapchat filter. Yeah, the right f-stop, yeah. And then he pressed the button while it was pointed directly at his face and took a photo, like a selfie, of yeah. himself. But so, so several pictures. As a pictures. monkey, he doesn't know what he's doing. Well, what he did well, how do you know? Was, Maybe he does. I mean, you know, you don't know. And you're, you're leading into the, the issue here, okay. Ken, because <laughs> his po pictures were published in a book. Yes. And he was identified, oh, it was Naruto the monkey who took these pictures. Now, a guy named Slater is a professional photographer. He owned the camera that he, obviously, he was off getting a smoothie while he left his Nikon behind. <laughs> right. So he publishes the book, and he starts making all the money. And what does PETA, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, do? They file a lawsuit for Naruto. Naruto is entitled to damages. Uh, we believe millions of dollars should be paid so that Naruto can fund a monkey preservation fund. Right, right. That's what and Naruto wanted. So, so. a federal judge right. uh, says, nice try. I, I got other cases to deal with. Out of here. I'm busy. I'm busy. Guy. But guess what? The Ninth Circuit is taking a hard look at this. The Ninth Circuit that everyone loves to, to beat up yeah. on. And the question is, do animals have standing to sue? Right. Now, 
Usually, when a lawsuit is settled, mm-hmm. as you as you know, Connor, as a practicing lawyer, the lawsuit goes away. Everybody yeah. shakes hands and so on, and the appellate right. court says, well, thank goodness we don't have to work on that one. Mm-hmm. We're overworked mm-hmm. anyway. Yeah. Not always. This case was settled. The monkey settled with <laughs> Slater, the photographer. Ha, how do we get but settlement authority the from Ninth this monkey? the Ninth Circuit said, we don't care if you settled. You know what? We think this is an important, intriguing issue about whether monkeys have standing to I mean, sue. most of so these... So they're hanging on to the case. How, how could the monkey settle? I, I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> yeah, he can, right? But hey, it is an interesting issue. He can issue. settle who by gets... eating only two bananas a day. Okay. okay. That's who, how you who settle gets, as a who monkey. Who gets to sue on behalf of cruelty to animal issues? Is it only a government and crime enforcement issue? Or... Can you file civil suits on behalf of animals? When we come back, America's latest craze, it's called forest bathing. It's going to be so much fun to go forest bathing. I'll tell you all about that. Plus, our Hot Tub Time Machine segment. Stay with us. We'll be back on CRN with the Royal Oak Show. Hey, Lorraine, do you realize that your mother, my mother-in-law, Chef Maria, has been serving Las Vegas since 1949? Yes, I do, Dennis. That's when she first met Howard Hughes, who fell in love with her cooking. And in 1955, she opened her first restaurant on Fremont Street. Yes, dear. And another great customer was Liberace. Wow. Then in 1962, while Frank Sinatra and the Rat Pack were causing global excitement on the Las Vegas Strip, your family opened their second restaurant. And in 1960, 72, Elvis Presley began electrifying Las Vegas audiences and eating in our restaurants. You know, Lorraine, this is quite a town. There's only one Las Vegas. And there's only one bootlegger Italian bistro. Folks, when you're in Las Vegas, come visit us. We'll make you feel like you're part of our family. The bootlegger Italian bistro, conveniently located at 7700 Las Vegas Boulevard, South Strip. Visit our website at www.bootleggerlasvegas.com. The smartest way for you to get the lowest prices on your plane tickets, domestic or international, is to call SmartFares first or last, but you've got to call us before you book your plane tickets. Fly anywhere in the world, fly anywhere in the U.S., and SmartFares can save you up to 75% on your plane tickets. We have the lowest airline ticket prices on over 500 airlines, and you've got a great 12-hour free cancellation window. Plus, with our live agent help, you can always get fast help and fast answers. So on your next trip, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, how about right now? Pick up your phone and call SmartFares, plus save up to 75% on your plane reservation. So call right now. 800-915-2644-800-915-2644-800-915-2644-800-915-2644. What are you going to do with your old car? You can try selling it, you could junk it, or you could donate it to Heritage for the Blind. Your car will be towed away for free and your donation is tax deductible. Just call 1-800-785-9618. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats. It doesn't matter if your vehicle runs or not. It will be towed away for free and you'll be supporting those that need help. Heritage for the Blind is a nonprofit organization that helps the visually impaired live fuller lives. Call right now to donate your car, and as a special thank you for calling, you'll receive a free three day vacation voucher to many exciting locations. Call Heritage for the Blind right now 1 800 785 9618. Donating is easy, and your vehicle is towed away for free. Plus, you'll get a free vacation voucher. Call now 1 800 785 9618. That's 1-800-785-9618. Welcome back to the Royal Oak Show with our co-host, Ken Jeffries, and our millennial correspondent, Connor Oaks. So, guys, uh, remember, we vote on the Moron of the Week candidates. Yes, we do. And at the top of the show, we had a lady from Texas who <laughs> was a 911 operator who just hung up on hundreds and hundreds of people after 10 seconds because she didn't feel like talking to them. So that's our candidate number one. Here's candidate number two. It's a guy who uh, went on a date with a woman, um, and uh, it, things didn't didn't go that well, uh, and so uh, he he thinks they went fine, and so he texts her and says, "Hey, sweetie, how about a how about a second date?" 
and uh, she ghosts him. Now, Connor, uh, as a millennial, you probably are familiar with this phrase, ghosts. Oh, I've I'm never, so familiar. I've, I've never heard of it. It means you just ignore somebody's follow-up? Exactly, yeah. It, it's, yeah. A, it's a turn of phrase in, in the modern <laughs> era where we, we have asynchronous communication techniques instead of you know picking up the phone and having to, oh, yeah, hi, Steve. You, you don't, didn't know it was Steve calling. Now you can just ignore Steve in every possible way. So that's right. ghosting. That's, that's ghosting. ghosting. Right. So, exactly. so, so Steve, after drinks and dinner uh, with uh, Amanda Bur- Burnett, follows up. She ignores his text. She's so, he's so angry, he mails her a bill for the dinner. Wow. Uh, an invoice for $40. It was $20 for bar cost. fourteen fifty for her meal of pulled pork tacos. Ooh, hey, that's one ninety nine good. processing fee. What is that? Do dates get processed he, now? He has an internal process. He's a bureaucracy. He does this every week. So <laughs> yeah, he's he's a process. Sounds like a loser to me. Yeah. No Sales tax at two fifty six. Shipping and handling of forty seven <laughs> cents. In total, her bill was forty dollars. So. Uh, this but, went viral. Wait, did he handle her? Or, so, wait, wait a minute. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's so, hilarious. Okay. Uh, some people said, so many girls just expect the guy to pay for everything, chimed in another critic. Uh, if you don't have the decency what? to text the guy back, he has every right to make you what? pay for the meal. Well, that's what some folks said. Some you guys disagree? have an expectation that if you go on a date that you're owed a text back, that you are, if you're going on a date, you're owed sex. Just if you're going on a date, common you're decency. Owed, sure, it's common, common decency. decency to expect sex. <laughs> but you're not owed In this era of the Me Too movement? Movement? You know what? Yeah. Honestly, so that's the thing. It's, it's really like, yeah, okay. The nine one one operator, morally despicable. Mm-hmm. There's there's something screw loose in her brain that right. she thinks that this is an okay way to conduct herself in our society and world. That this is that these are acceptable actions but to take. This guy, it's reprehensible, and she should be in actual factual jail for this. Yeah. But this guy's a bigger moron. Okay, like the so, idea so that time he would to get, vote. Time to that, vote. That he would look like the good guy. Sounds like your vote is is what? for the ghosted. Uh, yeah. Ghosted guy. What about? Yeah, I, I, I guess so too. And I'll throw it in for Mrs. Muir. Yes. Did in the ghost of Mrs. Muir. Remember that uh, yep. TV show. I remember it. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm going to make it a two-one. I'm going to vote for for the lady in that, Houston. But, that's but not you a, guys outvoted me. Vote. So you know what? He I could, it could have gone either way. It's not he, a bad he's, vote. he's the winner. Yeah. So uh, I told I told you to tell you about forest bathing. It's the biggest uh, new craze in America. It's a revolutionary way to walk through the forest. Very slowly. It's the new age thing Ugh. in Sonoma County. It doesn't involve actual bathing. You soak in the wonders of the forest. You take an hour to meander 50 yards down a manicured garden trail. You look at everything. You look at the leaves and the twigs. If you see an ant, you stop and take it in. You get up close and personal at, with your aunt. And Amos Clifford is charging thousands of dollars, $3,400, to teach forest bathing workshops for wannabe leaders to do what he does. Wannabe indeed. At the risk of sounding like, I don't know, you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> don't these hippies have jobs? Come on, people. Forest bathing? Isn't it time to slow down and disconnect from those devices, Connor? You know, they're not allowed to have their iPads and their oh, iPhones no. and so on. Millennials, you're embarrassing me. <laughs> hey, Jose, time to uh, hit us with our hot tub time machine. Sound bite from 1968. Let her rip, please. Suck it to me? <laughs> well, now, can anybody recognize what we just heard? Is that four Donald words. J. Four Trump? words. Trump? Do you, do you think that was Donald J. Trump? It was the 60s version of Donald J. Trump, okay, Richard uh, Nixon. Uh, yeah, yes, I think Ken can be even more specific, perhaps. Yeah, it was uh, Greg Garrison uh, went to a thing, an event that he was being honored, and he put it all together, I think. No, George Slaughter, I'm sorry, the Pacific Pioneer Broadcast. Right. But that's right. And the show he it was on? Laughin', Rowan and laughing. Laughin'. And this is Nixon appears on Laughing. Nixon was on Laughing. So on laughin'. it's like cognitive dissonance. Yeah. Richard Nixon standing there, and he couldn't even deliver the line. No. It was like, suck it, it to me. To me? But it's, it's rolled down. Down the decades it's throughout glorious. history, we're still talking about yeah. it. We're still thinking about it. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us here on the Royal Oak Show. Be sure to join us next week. Have a great week. Bye bye. CRN Digital Talk Radio prides itself on being the station of every situation, and you can listen to us on nearly any platform and device. Download to your iPhone, Android, and BlackBerry episodes of What's Cooking. And take Master Sommelier Michael Jordan with you to the wine shop so he can help you pick out that perfect bottle of wine. Stream episodes of the Sonoma Wine Report through our CRN app. Tune in radio, Nobex, Stitcher, Utunes, or AHA Radio. And start planning that unforgettable week.